Aaron Mate, host of The Pushback on Gray Zone, and in full disclosure, co-host with me of Useful Idiots, recently confronted The Guardian's Mark Townsend on a phone call after Townsend called Mate, quote, the most prolific spreader of disinformation on Syria without asking him for a quote ahead of time. Mate says Townsend could not explain why he did not contact him and could not identify any disinformation he has allegedly spread. Let's take a listen. Why didn't you contact me before publishing in The Guardian that I'm the leading purveyor of disinformation on Syria? I was in a report we were reporting on. Um, I think you got an email anyway regarding if you want to talk about it. No, I, I, I didn't get an email. You can, you can do that. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I did send an email and I got your auto reply, so I'm calling you now. And also, can you tell me why you also, okay, okay, so can you also tell me why you didn't identify a single piece of disinformation that I've spread? I think you've got a response from our readers that says, so if you want to add something to the piece, then, then go for it. I did not actually get a response. No, I didn't. Well, so, you'll get one soon. So will you not explain, Mark, why you didn't contact me and why you didn't name a single piece of disinformation that I've allegedly spread? I mean, it's pretty simple. Can you explain that for me? <laughs> well, that's not a very satisfying answer. It wasn't any answer no. at all. <laughs> no, and it goes on, and it's funny. At one point, Mark Townsend's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> why? Because you, right, with... you attacked me. <laughs> because you, you smeared me without providing a single example of the alleged disinformation I spread. And again... Just in terms of basic journalism, like 101, if you're writing an article about someone, you ask them for a comment. Yeah. He hadn't done that. He couldn't explain why. All he did was he kept saying, you'll be getting an email. Obviously, the truth is that that's a pretty uh, incriminating exchange because if I had written an article about someone spreading disinformation, first of all, I'd ask them for a comment. Second of all, I'd provide examples of that. And certainly if I got a phone call about it, I'd be able to rattle off the alleged examples of disinformation. He can't because there are none. Right, and it's correct to emphasize that. You, it really is standard journalism practice to at least try to reach out to the person. Um, you know, in this right. day and age, maybe you, you, know, you don't have to give them like a week to respond or something, but you have to at least sure. you know, send an email or a DM or a phone call before the piece goes live, you know, at a reasonable hour, give some time for response. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how many times it's happened where I've criticized someone and then they've been like, well, you did, why didn't you even reach out to me? And I'm like, I did reach out to you. I'm like, well, right. fine. Yeah, that's why you, <laughs> right. And that's why all these pieces say, you know, he was reached out for comment, didn't reply, right? right. That's, you're just covering your butt, basically. Um, but I think in a way it was helpful because it just shows how unserious this journalism is. And what's hilarious is that Mark Townsend himself was upset. He wrote an article about the British Home Office and the British Home Office tweeted about him. And he was like, it's his pinned tweet, actually. He's like, why didn't you contact me before really? writing this tweet? <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. So if you're tweeting about him, you better get a comment. But if he's writing an article about you, don't expect the same courtesy. Right. Was it... Was he accusing uh, Aaron of was it is it misinformation or disinformation, right? Because now I, I'm I'm coming to understand that usually, uh, actually Ryan Grimm helped explain this yesterday in the show. Disinformation and misinformation sound like the same thing, but what people actually mean by disinformation often. So the naive a naive person probably rightly assumes that means just more false information. But this you know new kind of media reporting the disinfo experts are using it in a very confusing way to mean information that just comes from some source that they don't trust or or, or don't align with or think is wrong you know ideologically. But right. the, the underlying information might be true, which is confusing to people. And I would argue it's they're being deliberately confusing right. to disguise it's the fact that misleading. this is genuine information. Right. Yeah. So the, it says campaign, the, the headline, which, by the way, Townsend had to change because, again, speaking to the journalistic integrity of this of this piece, uh, they had to change it because it was unfounded. It was originally saying something like they worked for uh, Russia and then they had to change that because uh, they didn't have any proof of that. So again, from out of the gate, it's it was a libelous piece. But it says, network of Syria conspiracy theory, theorists identified campaign disseminating disinformation sent thousands of tweets, yeah. often targeting the white helmets. And it's this is another example of how people weaponize conspiracy theories. You know, 
all you have to do is say that someone's a conspiracy theorist or a conspiracy th uh, perpetuating a conspiracy theory. There's no evidence of it. You just get to say that. And then people don't want to look like they're being conspiracy theorists by just saying, where's the evidence? Right. So it's a really great way to kind of stifle discussion and make you look like the crazy person if you dare to say, where's the evidence? I think a lot of people honestly self-censor. There are probably a lot of people who, who either self-censor or they've convinced themselves that anything called uh, conspiracy theory or anything called propaganda is that. And of course, this is the propaganda. And it's in many ways, it's the scariest form of propaganda because it presents itself as free of ideology, as just reporting the facts. And this is a reported article. This is not an op-ed. And they're saying again, you're a conspiracy theorist, minutes. you know, you're spreading disinformation, but what they actually, the, the thrust of that actual criticism is you are saying something that, or you're sharing information that it maybe is in the national security interest of Russia to be shared. Not that, not that the information is wrong, not that it's crazy, just that the, the source has some sympathy or somehow is aligned with Russia. That's actually what or they mean. Or could be used, <laughs> right, yeah. And in this case, it's Syria. And the, and the irony is that they're saying he's a conspiracy theorist. Aaron's entire reporting on this is based on leaked documents leaked, uh, that were leaked by whistleblowers for the OPCW, uh, the uh, chemical weapons organization. So again, you may find it inconvenient, but sadly, leaked documents don't really lie. Yeah. I've noticed this Unless becoming more and more of a beat among sort of journal the whole disinfo beat. Uh, NPR announced earlier this week or last week that they're going to have a whole disinformation and misinformation team to do, I'm sure, great reporting uh, about right. how, right, about how information that is actually true, but not, nevertheless has some kind of source that's ideologically inconvenient or, or uncomfortable with. Right or against the, for, the national foreign policy blob consensus. Right, exactly. I mean, they did that with, with uh, Hillary Clinton, tried to blame like Abby Martin and RT for being uh, propaganda because they dared report on Black Lives Matter. And that was considered pro-Russia propaganda. It's so embarrassing. Right, or, or, right. or releasing the, you know, the, the hacked emails that's, it, it, they could be true, obviously. You could say right. yeah, that was an illegal action and that shouldn't be taken or whatever, but you can't really dispute that the underlying information is accurate. It's real information. It's not, I mean, this is the, right. you know, right. this is the Hunter Which, Biden laptop story all over again. It's, they're actual exactly. emails. Y yes, maybe we got them surreptitiously, you know, whatever, but is the actual underlying information true? I mean, this comes into play with so much of the Assange stuff, so much of all of that. Exactly, exactly what I was going to say. Right, exactly. WikiLeaks is a great example of this. They can't actually dispute the documents or what's leaked, and they know that WikiLeaks has a re like an impeccable record of releasing things that are authentic. So they have to kill the messenger. They have to shoot the messenger or smear the messenger. And it's the same thing here. Now, I, I should say I, I had said that doc, leaked documents don't lie. Of course, like, documents can be fake, but, but no one accusing Aaron of, of disinformation actually alleges that they're fake documents because they don't want to actually engage in anything substantive. And that's what's so dangerous about these discussions is all you have to do is smear the person as a Putinist, as an Assadist, as a defender of Russia, as a defender of Syria, uh, and then you just have free range and you don't have to provide any evidence. And it's very neo-McCarthyite because then in addition to that, you have the whole guilt by association. So anyone promoting this person is now also guilty. They're part of this vast network, vast conspiracy theory. And again, the irony is that the people who are the conspiracy theorists, the people who are providing, making claims without evidence are precisely the people who are trying to smear others as conspiracy theorists. Right, they're casting aspersions without literally saying the documents are fake. They know they can't say that because they're not. Right. So they say, well, you know, this is very similar to, uh, you know, previous efforts to interfere in the U.S. political conversations and spread disinformation. And okay, well, what does that mean? That doesn't change the fact that the, the information is genuine. So that's the way, that's this right. like, roundabout way they go about criticizing things now. Yeah. And what they really should say is we don't want to get at all in the way of potential regime change or, um, you know, uh, certain policies making the United States more war ready with Syria, for example. We don't want to get in the way of that. So we don't want anything that's inconvenient in that narrative. But they can't say that because, again, they're pretending not to be propagandists and not to be stenographers for the State Department, either here or in England. Mm. Um, so that's what they got to do.
Do you know how that call ended? I admire ended? them more. Did, uh, did, did uh, Townsend eventually hang up on Aaron? He had to dash off. He had to dash <laughs> off because he had to meet people for dinner. Wow. And he all he did was say again and again, you should be getting an email about it. Now, of course, if I wrote something about someone, they called me up, I'd be like, oh, yeah, this is an example of what I was talking about. But to be fair, I, I would have put that in a piece. So it's a bit of a counterfactual. He, he never cold called him, right? He didn't know he was about. Uh, yeah. Townsend didn't know he was about to get a call from Aaron. He just answered a. That's also why yeah, you don't just so. answer random phone number, phone calls from right, people yeah, for numbers you true. don't have in your phone. Yeah. Which is what Aaron I has an interesting, a good record of, of uh, disarming people just through asking them questions. He also had Luke Harding on his show back when he was at Real News and he, Luke Harding wrote a book called Collusion and Aaron asked him about, to provide an exa a single example of collusion. It was about Trump and, and Putin. And he uh, got very flustered and then hung up on Aaron or there was a technical issue. Technical issue, what a shame. All right, yeah. well, we will have more rising in just a minute. Please stay tuned.